first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to this event, which is around the theme that is at the heart of what I have been working on for some time. I'm delighted to be here, as I said, and I'm very much looking forward to um, listening to your talks. So what, what I really want to talk about today is part of my um, um, ongoing research, uh, which is on the digital activism of Iranian justice-seeking mothers. The Justice Seeking Mothers is a loose network of mothers and families in Iran. They campaign for justice for their children who were shot and killed and um, um, sometimes disappeared by forces of the state during um, popular protests. And I want to start with this image. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Um, in this image, you can see a thread, a tweet thread. Um, from Shahnaz Akmali's Twitter in September 2020. Shahnaz, uh, Shahnaz Akmali or Shahnaz is one of the most prominent members of the Justice Seeking Mothers Network. In the thread, Shahnaz greets Behia Namju, who had newly lost her son, Navid Afkari, at the time of the tweet. Navid had just been executed in a nationally and internationally controversial, improperly conducted and unfair trial, where he had no access to independent legal representation. His arrest and execution were widely believed inside Iran uh, to be linked to his participation, along many others, in the popular um, and massive uh, anti-austerity protests of 2018 and 19. The thread reads, for my sister Behia Namju, who is made to wear black mourning for her son, um, the one who like me, had to give away her son to the darkness of the night and return home alone. But the darkness of the night never finished. My dear sister, now you have also arrived at the assembly of us, mothers of justice, the assembly to which I wish to add no other mother. And I hope that you are the last. In welcoming Behia to the assembly, which is a phrase she uses uh, to refer to mothers of justice, Shahnaz frames Navid's this, um, I argue, and my work in terms of an extended and shared narrative of justice seeking, a narrative which unites in an assembly all those mothers whose children have suffered this or disappearance at the hands of the government. I juxtapose this thread with another of Shahnaz's Shahnaz's Instagram uh, post from 2021, which shows a very familiar practice among these mothers. Um, a familiar practice often is staged on the Instagrams of these mothers. Uh, the justice seeking mothers stage small intimate gatherings, often on the grounds um, that they want to comfort each other, keep each other company, um, and not to make each other feel lonely. So they also stage gatherings at their children's grave sites. They memorialize uh, the, these gatherings using the visual affordances of Instagram. Sometimes, as here, the mothers are holding framed photographs. Uh, this particular post was shared and distributed uh, across different platforms, as it's often the case. Um, and you can see Shahnaz uh, on the far uh, left on the far left of the image, yes. Shahnaz's own son was also shot and killed during the Green Movement protest after the contested election of 2009. And she has become a leading voice um, in the Justice Seeking Mothers Network and her Instagram page is a vital hub for the women and their supporters. Through the Justice Seeking Mothers campaigns and the effective economy of their online presence, other mothers have joined over the years, particularly after the anti-austerity protests and uprisings of 2018 and 2019 in Iran, where hundreds of protesters, often young and from working class backgrounds, were killed, imprisoned and disappeared. These mothers um, either follow um, the pages of prominent mothers like Shahnaz Akmali or set up similar Instagram pages or attend their regular uh, physical, basically their regular gatherings in their homes. So my question is how is, 
or in this research, in part of my research, just my question is how is this, is the justice seeking mothers activist collectivity constructed through the affective affordances of both digital and physical spaces, given the limited resources and opportunities inside Iran for grassroots, for grassroots political intervention into the national train. There has, there has been little research into um, the grassroots construction of political spaces in semi-authoritarian contexts in Iranian, Middle Eastern, uh, or further afield. Also, landmark studies of um, social media in Iran um, as contested public spheres were also mainly, um, they're, they're mainly concerned with the aftermath of, let's say, the Green Movement, protests of 2009, um, and, and the so-called Arab, uh, Arab Spring of 2011. Um, Western-based scholarship um, has often focused more on singular and spectacular. Uh, rather than extended crisis um, or everyday crisis. So in archiving Shahnaz Akmali's Instagram and those of other mothers, my focus was on their Instagram as nodes in a networked collectivity that brings together the living and the dead. I framed the justice-seeking mothers' visual practices as oppositional mourning. That is mourning which seeks justice um, from, the, from the state. Uh, from the government for an, for an acknowledged killing, um, killings and disappearances. In Butler's terms, uh, their mourning contests the state's ability to decide which lives are worthy of grieving and which are ungrievable and disposable. And what I focused on was how the justice-seeking mothers mediated affective practices of intimacy and melancholia. While Instagram is often associated with the vernacular of intimacy and mundane self-curation, according to Gibbs um, and others, I argue that the justice-seeking um, mothers use Instagram's digital affordances in combination with the physical and social affordances of their space of home and grave sites to present the self as highly relational. They use uh, their Instagram and Twitter to organize emotional attachments, both to conventional familial forms and also to open to novel and flexible modes of collectivity. In using the term affective practice, I follow Wetherall's uh, conception of effects and emotions as being entangled in processes of meaning making. I mean, though uh, I see affect as less bounded than emotion, or in other words, more about becoming than being, as uh, Hansen and Gorton uh, put it. So I, in in, I interpret the justice-seeking mothers network as an intimate public and an affective scene of identification in the words of Berlin where strangers or those um, who were hetero, uh, hetero strangers can seek recognition of each other's pain, disappointment and loss, while an intimate public is usually only implicitly political, the justice seeking mothers network addresses its demand for recognition directly to the state, with a transnational audience as its witness. I also argue that one of the most manifested affective practices of this group is melancholia, in the sense that the darkness um, of loss, as Shahnaz uh, put it, Shahnaz Akmali puts it, never finished. The women stubbornly refuse to relinquish the lost other, um, to quote Eng and Han. They don't want to put. They don't want to put their uh, mourning behind them. To put it simply, I also explain how this intimate public is oriented around an imperative to assemble. I, inter I interpret assembly in the words of Shahnaz Instagram uh, in Judith Butler's sense, which means bodies appearing collectively in public and staging through their vulnerability a political claim to justice and recognition. And given the real limitations on public protests in Iran, I see the activists' small gatherings in their homes and at the gravesites, um, a hybrid 
forms of assembly that necessarily blur the boundary between private and the public realms. Um, Often, as I said, these practices of intimacy as are intertwined in, in this visual archive with practices of melancholia. On 15th of January 2020, Shahnaz's Instagram page featured an image of her putting a large photograph of her son Mustafa in her handbag just before going to report herself to the police to begin her one year sentence in prison for propaganda against the government. In, in her post, she wrote, I am a mother whose only crime is seeking justice and repeating this and, and, and asking a simple question which was never answered. Who killed my son? Who killed my children? I'm grateful to all those people who have been next to me and my family. We are each other's family. Shahnaz's Instagram post assumes and plays to a, to a familiar and intimate relation with her online public following. So people reply, for example, using the heart emoji or other similar emojis, but Shahnaz also refers to those people who have been next to her family, who have become her family. She frequently refers to the other mothers as her sisters and their lost children as my children, as she does here. And, uh, and the image. So the Instagram post then recruits and interweaves these different layers of intimacies, sisters and strangers, in Berlin's original definition of the term intimate public. The mother's practices of intimacy create, I suggest, on a smaller scale, a kind of supportive and home-like territoriality, a smaller version of the staging of dead children's images, that we saw in the previous Instagram post. And rather than leaving uh, the photo of Mustafa in the domestic environment, in the gendered maternal space of the, ha the home, Shahnaz is taking home with her, in a sense, to even, I mean, to Evin prison inside her purse. This performance doesn't fetishize the private sphere as a gendered maternal space, I argue, so much as utilizes its conventional affective affordances to stage a public political intervention. In Frames of War, Judith Butler observes the, that grief may not only be a private matter, but potentially furnishes the basis for political community. And Shahnaz's post, like other posts foregrounds the repetitive and persistent performance of grief, again, the practice conventionally associated with the sphere of the family and the mourning role of the mother. Um, I quote Shahnaz again, I am a mother whose only crime is seeking justice and repeating this and asking a simple question which was never answered. I term her practice here as an affective practice of melancholia. Freud described melancholia in his 1917 essay as an unending grief, a repeated return to the source of the trauma where the mourner refuses to give up the one who is lost. Here, melancholia um, is seen as the opposite of healthy mourning. Um, again, I mean, against the, this notion, Munoz um, has argued for depathologizing melancholia and reframing it as a political resource. Um, a political resource that, I mean, here I quote uh, Munoz, um, that helps us reconstruct identity and take our dead with us to the various battles we must wage in their names and in our names. The melancholic's absolute refusal to relinquish the other, as Ng Enhan put it, becomes the basis then of a community's ethical and political project, a project of justice seeking. The justice seeking mothers, um, I mean, their basically digital visual archives then draw on the affective practices of intimacy and melancholia to repeatedly stage their loss and thus enact a space of political appearance where bodies, both living and dead, assemble together. 
The assembly is both an embodied and a mediated performance. Along with the physical infrastructures of urban space, technological infrastructures provide the conditions of the assembly's appearance. So in the sense, uh, um, media is the stuff of self-constitution, the site of the hegemonic struggles um, over who we are in Butler's words. Both Twitter and Instagram um, both Twitter and Instagram, the platforms the justice-seeking mothers mainly utilized, um, mainly utilize, are distinguished by the use of hashtags, which easily enable cross-platform dissemination and archiving of um, their uh, threads tre and um, pictures, sorry, images that they post. Hashtags become resources, I argue, for the mother's affective practices. They organize a political collectivity through shaping the emotional relation between the individual and the communal, the I and the we, amplifying a form of connective uh, rather than only collective action. Um, so, um, I think in this in this network, um, the hashtags repeat variations on on, on a key phrase: justice seeking. Um, also, I mean, and, and justice seeking interpersed with names of victims and their mothers. So this intimate and melancholic practice is continually reinforced between the mothers who act as nodes in the network. Um, as Butler argues. The V that is performatively assembled around the demand for justice is always in some sense, we the people. So nonetheless, this we is um, in actuality plural, plural rather than um, ecstatically fused. We can observe this in the present case in the way um, the mother's intimate public is structured around different levels of intimacy. The mother's communications often take a dyadic form that is a personal message addressed by one individual to another. Yet on social media platforms, there is always a third party present in the shape of a large, mostly anonymous audiences of media users. As Kaplan has argued, the emotional interactions of two or three people will, li will likely attract a wider intimate public who enjoy a vicarious intimacy in witnessing um, basically uh, the intense intimacy of the, the, the identified protagonists. So while Berland envisaged intimate publics as emerging in mass mediated context among strangers, um, what is characteristic about uh, the posts of um, the justice-seeking mothers is that um, there appears to be two circles of intimacy. Of the justice-seeking mothers, uh, basically, um, is, I mean, is that there appears to be two circles of intimacy, as I said, sorry, I just lost. So uh, that of the mothers who often refer to each other as uh, sisters, and that of the wider anonymous public of strangers. So this observation also speaks to a debate among feminist and media scholars on hierarchies of mornings. Uh, Papayais uh, has argued for the potential of social media affordances to democratize access to mourning and grief and break down the exclusionary practices associated uh, with the conventional organizations of um, mourning around the family. Papayas argues against those uh, who I quote, would defend the periority of the exclusivity of biological and cultural kinship in mourning. But I am very, however, that the deterritorialization of grief in the, in the way Papayas describes it may tie in with the ideology that uh, Anita Sei Chan has called digital universalism. That is the idea of the net as a unique and universally inclusive and equalizing space, one that operates free from the physical biases of the offline world. So this is in this um, stance, as Chan and also Wendy Wells 
point out, is usually associated with a certain technological determinism, which emphasizes digital media affordances over the affordances of cultural, social, and physical environments for affective practices of meaning making. Um, do I still have some time? Do I still have time? Sorry. You're just at 20 minutes. Okay, so I don't so, have time. <laughs> a couple more minutes will be fine. Okay, couple, oh, that's, that, that's perfect, thank you. So, these scholarly debates on who has access to mourning are important in so far as they concern matters of political inclusion and exclusion, whose voices are heard and whose voices are erased. They also raise questions about whether political community or solidarity is based on reified pre-existent pre identities of gender, or race or class, or whether solidarity can be envisaged as a performative practice of becoming rather than fixed being. In my argument, intimate and melancholic affective practices have the potential to throw into question reified and fixed notions of identities. Intimate publics may, as we said, envisage new affective spaces and alternative political orders, while the melancholic refusal to forget injury has also been positively framed, not as a nostalgic return to the past, but as bringing the past to speak to the present in new um, and politically mobilizing ways. So I thus situate the affective practices of intimacy and melancholia sustaining the justice-seeking mother's digital network as transgressive rather than respectful of um, conventional boundaries, as fluid rather than fixed, as open rather than closed. To frame it in spatial terms, the justice-seeking mother's practice of maternal mourning is both deterritorializing uh, in that it extends beyond the privatized realm of the home into the public domain, and it is also re-territorializing territorializing in that um, it depends on the affordances of physical locations and cultural practices to create public affective reverber reverberations, sorry, Re reverberations. So, I'm going to wrap this up by saying the situated melancholic performance of mourning motherhood challenges conventional gender boundaries between the private and the public sphere and imagines new forms of solidaristic connection. Thank you so much.